The first abandoned railway we're covering in Guide Rail is a short but very special one, particularly significant in this 150th year of the Brighton Terriers. For it was here on Hailing Island that the class stood their ground to the very end and refused to be scrapped by British Railways. At 90 years of age, the little tank engines were the only locos light enough to cross the wooden swing bridge across Langston Harbour, which gave enough time for preservationists to save up and rescue the final six of the class. The five mile route itself was very nearly saved too. We're walking along the old track bed today, so that clearly didn't work out, but the idea did lead to another railway altogether. If you haven't heard of the Hailing Billy before, let's cross this bridge together. The reason for the branch line existing at all was actually because of the Portsmouth and Arundel Canal of 1823, designed to take boats to London via rivers instead of the vulnerable English Channel. It was heavily supported by MP William Huskisson, who later became the first casualty of railways when he was struck down by Stevenson's rocket. Like Huskisson, the canal system also fell victim to the railway age. To replace it, a branch from the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway's Havant Station was planned, which would travel over to the island to serve a planned merchant port. Money was tight, but contractor Frederick Furness took on the task. Goods trains were running along the first section on the mainland from 1863, but all dreams of crossing over to the island were quickly washed away. Literally, because the proposed route was to build onwards along an embankment following the shoreline of the island, which had been swept away before it was even finished. Don't build railways in the sea. A local landowner swam in and helped to fund an alternate route actually on land, so that he could use the railway to take passengers to his new resort and racecourse, because everyone was rich in those days. Where we start our journey is at the main terminus at South Hailing a 10 minute walk from the beach. Nothing remains of the station itself, but the old goods shed has been extended and converted into a theatre. There never was any serious goods services on the line, and this became one of the only places in British Railways days to still permit mixed passenger and freight trains. In the earliest days, the branch was run by second-hand contractors locos. When the LBSCR took over in 1872, they eventually started running their own hand-me-down engines. Eventually, Stroudley's Terriers were trialled on the line, and they very quickly marked their territory. Ha 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 ha. Today, there are great views across to Portsmouth, and you can see how close to the sea the line used to be, even after being realigned. Jumping ahead a bit, but being on the south coast, so close to the naval base, a sign of the Second World War remains in the form of a pillbox right next to the line. This in turn is next to a sign of some passive-aggressive English person with a sharpie. There were two intermediate stations on the line, the first being North Hailing, looking more like a halt and not one that's too welcoming on a gloomy winter day like this. A little further on, the cycle trail turns to cross the road bridge, but carry on a little while and you'll get a signal. This was recently restored in its stop position, overlooking the remains of the iconic Langston Harbour viaduct. It's not often that a signalman has to show lanterns to both trains and boats to safely pass. But for many years, a lonely cabin stood guarding the swing bridge in the centre of the old wooden viaduct. In the curtain-closing days of British Railway steam, seeing a terrier panting across with a train of comparatively giant coaches was like watching a painting come to life. 
it was the deterioration of the wooden support beams that BR took as the last straw for the branch, but relics of the past are scattered around on both sides. On the mainland now, the next stop was Langston Station, just before the main road. The inspector who came to authorise the line in the 1860s wasn't best pleased because the level crossing had been made without permission. Nevertheless, it remained until the line's closure, and nowadays it seems that locals are pleased that the railway was here at all, because it's left a trail for nature to grow in its path. The trains affectionately became known as the Hailing Billy, but BR weren't as fond of the wheezing dinosaurs of steam. In May 1957, they trialled an SECRP class on the line, but despite being a younger improvement of the Terrier, loco crews preferred the Stroudley design. No comment. At last, the track curved round and over a crossing into Havant Station, where the branch trains had their own little bay platform. On the 2nd of November 1963, the last service train returned here, being topped and tailed by Terriers Whitechapel and Martello. The following day, the Locomotive Club of Great Britain ran a special rail tour, topped and tailed again, with Poplar and Fenchurch, the two eldest terriers. All four are now preserved. Knoll and Freshwater were also saved. After an unsuccessful attempt at preserving the Meon Valley line, Freshwater actually became a pub sign on the island, at the Brickwoods Brewery. It was plinced still with water in the boiler, which remarkably kept it in good condition for when it was sold to its new home thereafter on the Isle of Wight. There were several attempts to retain the branch as a heritage line, but by the 80s the council had already turned it into a cycleway, so they were only prepared for a narrow gauge line to share the space. The vote from the group was that it had to be standard gauge or nothing, so there was nothing. Other more determined members did eventually manage to establish a narrow gauge line elsewhere on the island. This is the Hailing Seaside Railway, running for one mile towards the amusement park on the south coast of the island. It had originally been at a holiday camp further north, but it was rebuilt in 2003 to travel along the beach instead, operating mainly in summer. Considering how fortunate we are to have so many preserved lines in the UK nowadays, having this shorter branch line as a walking trail is still a nice way to appreciate what was once here. If you'd like to visit the Island of the Terriers yourself, then there are several places to join the trail. But the main ones are at Havant train station or at Station Theatre. It's a five mile cycle route from end to end and is great for any wildlife spotters. Of course, you can also see the real hailing billies themselves. Poplar and Knoll are now preserved at the Kentony Sussex Railway, Martello at the Bressingham Steam Museum, Fenchurch at the Bluebell Railway, Freshwater on the Isle of Wight Steam Railway, and Whitechapel, now named Sutton, on the Spa Valley Railway. Please check out the trail's website for more information, and I also want to give a shout out to the Hailing Island Branch by John Scott Morgan, which is filled with tons more details that I couldn't include in this video and is well worth picking up a copy. Huge thanks to my brilliant patrons, Alex Goodman, GBH Train, Donald Nine and Douglas Ten, D0280 Falcon, Sean Tempest, Nat, Sam Bennett, Alco, Henry Forrester, TR2000, 
and Random Thomas fan.